Ranger Dave and Calamity Carla, we're in your neck of the woods this week. What do we got on tap? We are really close to our home in Sierra Vista. We're in Benson, Arizona right now. We're going to do a lot of camping, gonna to go to Saguaro, just the whole surrounding area. We're only about an hour south of Tucson. Also, can't wait to get to Tombstone. You're really going to love Karchner Caverns tour too. Been in a lot of caves in our time, and this one certainly is on the top of my list. Well, this looks like our turn here. We're yeah. here at Karchner Cavern. Let's check it out. Look at those mountains. Yeah. Wow, this looks awesome in here. Nice entrance. Look at that backdrop. We met up with the birches because that's their backyard now. They live in southern Arizona and have been bragging about coming out to Karchner, especially the campsite, saying that it's just pristine and it did not disappoint. We got checked into our RV spots. They had a little path or a little bridge over to the Discovery Center and it was a really cool museum telling the story of the cavern. Hi guys. Hi. Welcome to Karchner Caverns. Thank you. Well, thank you. you. Guys ready to go caving? Absolutely. Let's go see the cavern. All right, let's, let's do, do this. We met Ranger Rochelle at the front desk and she escorted us off to, they have this little tram ride that takes you up to the cavern. Two students from the University of Arizona had discovered it back in 1974 as they were just exploring looking for caverns like that. They went down a sinkhole. Who goes down a sinkhole? Ranger Rochelle, she was fabulous. She fit right in with this crew because we're a little like, you know, off anyway. Ranger Rochelle, if at any time, can I get out here? Of course. If this isn't for you, for whatever reason, we can have you out in a matter of days. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Gonna have you out immediately. We're not very far from an exit at any point. So this is one of the smaller areas that we're gonna be in. That freaked me out. Let me tell you. <laughs> she opens up this double freezer refrigerator door and I had to make sure there was a way for me to get out because I'm a little weird about going underground. We go down this long cavern, and it was just, it reminded me of Indiana Jones. I had to put on my Indiana Jones hat because I just didn't feel right with a baseball cap. Oh, yeah, let's go. Everybody I gotta get, good? I get speed lock. Can we ready? All let's right. go. Let's do it. All right. We have 1,300 feet of limestone tunnels. They estimated about eight months to do all that. So this limestone is a specific type of limestone called Escobrosa limestone. Now, I'm not a geologist, so I cannot tell you the scientific meaning of that word, but my guess would be really hard limestone. <laughs> I was expecting cold when we got in, and it was the exact opposite. It was a little warm in there and a little sweaty. It's an awesome construction, I'll say, of, of the way that they navigate you through the cavern. See this pink line goes all the way up and over? This is a fault line. Now, don't worry if you're from someplace like California, it's not seismic. Faults are water superhighways, especially for monsoon rains. And every cave that we've been in is a little bit different. This is one of my very favorites. So without further ado, on behalf of myself and all of us here at Karchner, welcome to the Rotunda Room. <laughs> it's very dramatic. Welcome to the Rotunda Room. Oh my <laughs> it's very dramatic. There's drops on the ceiling that you see coming through. Now when the drop hits the fresh air up there, it's gonna let go of the calcite it picked up, make a deposit. If that drop's going a little bit faster, it's actually gonna deposit on the ground. So does anybody know what we call the ones on the ground? Stalagmites. Right, G for ground, you might trip over them. Right. Good way to remember. Now the ones on the ceiling? Stalagmites. C for ceiling, holds tight. Lots of ways to remember. Now, when they happen to join forces, what do we call them? 
A column. All right, you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. <laughs> yep, a column. And we have our very first column right over here. So this is a drapery column, and this is formed by flowing water. Water Beautiful. flows down the angle of a wall, deposits thin sheets of calcite. Gary and Randy were really careful. They didn't want to disturb anything they didn't need to. Very well marked trails in and out, always use the same trail. So they first got in here in late 1975 and they would have been walking towards us making that trail. They had the actual tracks of the two college guys who, how they got in from the, the sinkhole and it was still there. The trail has been and is still used today over and over again. So this is our last look at the rotunda room. Yeah, Take a beautiful. look back at that ceiling. That's why we call it rotunda. Rotunda in Latin means round. Most stable hollow structure in nature is a dome. So that is the hallmark of a stable cave. So we're transitioning now into the throne room. The different types of structures were just like you were in an alien world. I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, doing the wow. It's incredible. Here's where I introduce the star of our show and tell you how we named the throne room, the throne room. Xanadu was their secret code word for the cave system. They stood at the base of that column and looked up that they said, we finally found the ruler. So the name of the poem and the ruler of Xanadu was Kublai Khan. That is a 58 foot tall column, just shy of a six story building, tallest column in Arizona. Still active in his widest part, he's about 12 feet in diameter. Still growing, kind of a selfish ruler as well in that he takes most of the water for this area. I'm not a fan of going below the earth because <laughs> I like air, but it was really cool. Welcome back to the surface, guys. That was amazing. Thank you very much. That was great. Thank you. You're welcome. Sweet Pea, you did it. I mean, you go, girl. I mean. I can't say that I'm going to do all the caves that we come across, but this one, I was glad I did. Unless you go and see it, it's hard to imagine. We wake up the next morning and we have something completely different planned. We headed up to Oracle, which is about a two hour drive around Mount Lemmon through Tucson up to Titan Power Rentals. And I have been wanting to do this probably my whole life, get in a dune buggy and go through the mountain. And it was a wild ride. Is this your first time in one of these? Yes, it is. When Sarah said to me, you might want to take out your earrings, I made the right decision. When she said it was going to rip my earrings out of my ears, I was like, no, I'm not going. There's no way I can go. Any questions? No. All right, let's go have fun. Yay! Seriously, hold on to your heads. There was Sarah leading us, and we had Ranger Dave behind us, and Sweet Pea was driving, and away we went. We just made our way through the Coronado National Forest. It was just a really fun time. <laughs> it was amazing to me. You know, it was one of the most fun things I've done in a long time. I wasn't prepared for this climb. The story from Sarah was, don't take your foot off the gas. When I heard that, I just swallowed really hard <laughs> and held on and just kept saying, don't take your foot off the gas, don't take your foot off the gas. I think it was a fantastic ride. You know, I've never experienced anything quite like that before. And these machines just really chew up the turf. You want an adrenaline rush? Go to Oracle and look up Titan Power Rentals because they will take you on a, a trip of a lifetime. We woke up the next morning and Ranger Dave and Calamity Carla had probably one of their favorite places to go is Tombstone. Lots of history in this little town in the middle of the desert. We took the RVs there and the first person we met was Mayor Dusty. Mayor Dusty was a character. His family has been there for generations. Well, Tombstone is, uh, is an old 
Silver Boomtown. Silver was discovered here in 1877, a man by the name of Ed Shefflin. When he left Camp Huachuca, soldiers told him, said, Ed, all you're gonna find over there is your tombstone. My great-grandfather was doing a story about the boom of the Southwest and the capture of Geronimo, and he ran into the same soldiers at Camp Huachuca, and they told him about this fellow, Ed Shefflin, out here in the hills. And he came out and found him, and they spent about three months together. And, you know, my family's been here ever since. Wow. It's nice to have the tourists come here and see all of the old buildings and, and learn about the history of Tombstone. And it, there was a lot of famous gunfights and a lot of famous people come here. Really, what made it happen was the silver and gold. The nice thing about Tombstone, it is the real rest. It's the real, true West. You know, and it pays to know the mayor <laughs> because he arranged to get us a stagecoach ride, which I found really cool. Welcome to Tombstone, everybody back there. Welcome aboard the old Tombstone Tours. My name is Preacher Tom. I'm going to be your driver, narrator, and part-time irritator. Wow. We're going to head back over 140 years, back when Tombstone was nothing but a silver mining town. Uh, we actually became a city back in the year 1879. I love the idea that, you know, everything is historic. It is the original. It's the real deal. Now, on that corner is a world-famous Crystal Palace. It was actually built the year we became a city. But the voice on this guy, on Preacher Tom, you really felt like if you closed your eyes, you had a real cowboy yeah. taking that team around the town. Yep. Perfect. After the stagecoach ride, Calamity Carla suggested that we go into Spurs Western Wear. Oh my gosh, producer man. What Can we do something about this Florida look? Uh, Florida look? The surfer do look? Cowboy? Absolutely. Can I dress you? Let's do it. You too. Ooh, I want to see Let's that. Let's go. Let's do this. I don't know. What do you uh, Turn around a little bit. What do you think? What do you think, Ranger Dave? Uh, I think. Thumbs down. Uh, well, uh, that's an improvement. Let's, uh, can we turn it around a little bit? Yeah. You know, I'm kind of. Uh, yeah, not so sure. Much better than the first one. Hey. Oh my you blend. gosh. Oh my good. Third time's the charm. What do you think? I Thumbs think so. Up. Say it. Thumbs up. <laughs> Damn. All right. Awesome. Sweet. That was this fun. Is, this has been awesome. I think it's great. Check it out. Oh my God, you look great. What do you Whoa, think? Hey, dude. I, I finally got Whoa. it. You finally, finally got, got him got in him a pair of boots. Wear. Let's go down to the OK yeah. Corral and take the boys on. Come on. <laughs> All right. It was really like being transported back into time and getting to walk those same streets in Wyatt Earp and Virgil Earp and all their steps and Doc Holliday and, and see where all that history went down. When you walked out in the street, it all of a sudden felt different to me. Now this is how you see Tombstone. Yeah, absolutely. They were looking sweet by the time we, we got done with them. We got them out there. We were walking down Allen Street. I tell you what. Everybody was checking us out. How y'all doing today? Getting dressed up like that and having the whole group with all four right. of us dressed like that, yeah. it was special. It was so a special moment, made me feel a part of the Old West. When you walk down Allen Street these days, if you just try just a little bit, you can feel as if you're back in 1880s. The town too tough to die. Next on our list was our national park, Saguaro National Park. I, uh, cactus land, I don't know what you call it. Well, Calamity's been talking about yep. it for a long time. They fell in love with Arizona years and years ago and yep. finally made it their home. This is one of our favorite spots. It it's is, it's it basically is. our back door. It's about an hour's drive from our home. Oh, this is great, guys. We found some parking spaces for the RVs in that picnic area. Yeah, this park was built a long time ago, so they didn't really anticipate rigs like what we're using. 
This is called the Rincon District. 50 miles away is, is another part of Saguaro National Park, which is referred to as the Tucson Mountain District. Both of them have different things to offer. That's an Acatillo right there. Everybody pronounces different cacti differently. And of course, there's tons of prickly, prickly pear. Prickly pear. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, you guys, check out this prickly pear. Look what it's hugging. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. What do you call that, honey? I forgot. This is a barrel cactus, but it's called a fish hook barrel cactus because oh, the barbs I see that. are like a fish hook. I mean, leave it to us to run into a fish hook with Brain Man and Producer Man of Addictive Fishing. And he's really cool. He's very, very healthy. And very healthy. Well, I'm ready to see some of the majestic uh, saguaros. Let's the big yeah, giants. The big yeah, guys. the big let's giants. Yeah, let's check that out. Cactus paradise. There is every kind of cactus just about that you can think of. Pin cushion cactus right in front of producer right. man there. Oh. Cool. Well, check it out. And right let's here, look at this tuna on this prickly pear. They call it tuna, but it's like a, you know, it's a bloom for the prickly pear, but it's also the fruit of the prickly pear. And of course, they use that for numerous things, especially margaritas. But you can consume the rest of it as well? Oh yes, the pads. Yeah, you can eat the pads. And then you can cut it and slice it. You can eat it, you can make tea out of it. You can also ground it into a flower. I like the cactus. I don't know them all by no means, but uh, I'm learning and it's something that interests me. In my early days of television, I worked the senior PGA uh, at Scottsdale, and it was kind of my introduction to the desert. And this cactus was the one they warned us about. They called it the jumping choya. It'll jettison off a piece if Can you he, brush up. Oh, look, check it out. On your stick. Check it out. Oh, my gosh. So I just hit my stick, <laughs> yes. and it caught one. When you rub up against this as you walk by it, it jettisons the endings of it out, and it, that's how it propagates, because you can see all around here, They've dropped off pieces. We've got the chola and the pin cushion and the barrel cactus and the prickly pears. And the saguaro. Yeah. Well, this is the reason the park was named for what it is, Saguaro National Park. And look at this one. Oh, wow. That's an excellent example, isn't it? Look at this view. Oh, my gosh, this is beautiful. You can see the valley. And this big saguaro cactus. This is the Sonoran Desert, and that's the only place that these giant cactus grow naturally. All right, let's head up to the point here and get a view of the entire park. Come here, guys. I want to show you something. I got a great view up here that I think you might enjoy. I mean, all I can see right now are those gorgeous mountains. They're everywhere. Oh, my God, look at this Look view. at this. What do you think? This caps off our week here in Arizona with one of the most interesting national parks I've ever been to, Saguaro National Park. You ready, babe? Let's do it. Let's, Let's do go. this. We hiked up and we've had a ball. This is just my wheelhouse, you know, I love this. This was fantastic. So what was your favorite part of this trip? Has to be Tombstone for me. I want to go back, put my cowboy hat on, put my boots on, and like drink whiskey at the bar and maybe play some poker and accuse someone of cheating and, you know, <laughs> yeah, so Tombstone. <laughs> my favorite part was the UTV ride in Oracle. I'm the adrenaline junkie guy, and that was everything I could handle and more. <laughs> Of course, everything's a highlight of the trip for me because that's just what I love to do. Just go from one adventure to the next. 